calculate uh, photovoltaic energy generation in a relatively uh, fast and simple method. This is a little bit more complex than the sort of back of the envelope method that we used in the beginning of the semester, which used global horizontal irradiation. In this case, we're going to be drilling down to look at shading and self-shading of different surfaces and different orientations. Uh, so this will be a, a bit more sophisticated. Uh, there's still some simplifications we'll be using, which I'll show you as we go along. So I'm going to take a look at this building. And what I've set up here is a very simple one room model with where the purple is all areas of interest uh, for uh, PVs. I don't know yet which ones or if any of these are going to be viable surfaces, but I'd like to take a look and see how, um, how much energy they generate and also get a sense from aesthetics whether I'd like to include them. So the way that um, this is all Rhino geometry right now, and I'll show you how to translate this into the geometry using Honeybee and Ladybug. So we're going to start in a similar fashion we started in the past. Make sure you assign a project directory and an orientation relative to your project north. So here's the y-axis is up and we've got uh, this facing a little bit east of north. Um, make sure you customize this for your own project and then locate an EPW file. From that EPW file, we're going to take the location, latitude and longitude and elevation above sea level, and then also the direct to normal radiation and the diffuse horizontal radiation. This then is going to make what's called a sky matrix. This essentially calculates the dome of the sky and where the sun is coming from uh, at all hours of the year and in all sort of sky patches. Um, this sky matrix then allows for very, very quick res um, simulation of where uh, the vectors, essentially, that intersect with these uh, uh, target services. Uh, and this sky matrix goes right into this incident radiation um, component. You can find these in the ladybug tab under... Analyze geometry, incident radiation there, and then the sky matrix is in this visualized data category here, sky matrix there. So that is this one here. Okay. So we've got the sky matrix. The next thing we need is both the geometry for the target surfaces as well as the context geometry that might shade those context surfaces. So in this template, I've divided this up into two parts. There's the building and context, which I'm going to turn these off so you can see, would be the building, would be all of the opaque parts of the building except for, well, actually also the glazing, all the parts of the, the building that would sh potentially shade a photovoltaic surface, uh, exclude, excluding the photovoltaics themselves, and then any context shade from buildings or trees. And then one by one, I'm going to assign uh, photovoltaic surfaces for um, each of these geometry buckets so I can test them against each other. So we'll start with the north and set that geometry and then the east and then the south. Oops. Be all of these. And then the west. What's this? And then I've got two uh, options for the roof. I've got this flat surface here, and then I've got all of these guys, kind of a sawtooth idea there. Okay, so now that I've got all of those surfaces, um, these are all just hooked up to wireframe, so I can tell without any of the geometry on what I'm going to be simulating. Um, and then that's the geometry in the context. The grid side is grid size is the analysis grid size 
And uh, this is going to be important. I'll demonstrate this a little bit later. The offset different distance is the amount of distance that the program automatically decides that the um, target surface should be offset. So for example, if I've got um, this surface right here, the using this, um, this will automatically offset it uh, 10 centimeters, uh, right? 10 centimeters um, from this surface, meaning that it won't overlap with this. This is a way that uh, we can ensure that we don't have coplanar surfaces which shade each other. Um, then uh, we have the legend, which I've set at a maximum of 1600 kilowatt hours uh, per square meter. Uh, you'll see what that means in a, a little bit. And then the CPU count, you can customize this for your computer. Sometimes at very small grid sizes, this can take a while to run or even crash your computer. So be careful with that. Um, and then run. So as I run this, um, I'm running this for the north side, and so you can see here that the north side is generating about 480 kilowatt hours per square meter. And if I come over here, you can see, um, well, let's start here. This is the total uh, kilowatt hours for the whole surface. Um, but we remember this is the, the uh, radiation from the sun, but we want to account for the conversion losses of energy that we're getting using photovoltaics. And in this case, let's all just use a 0.15 total efficiency, so 15% efficiency from solar radiation to uh, alternating current electricity. And that's going to translate to 1911 kilowatt hours for that whole surface, or if you were, we can divide by the area of the surface. Uh, we get 68 uh, kilowatt hours per square meter. Um, I've, I've got these recorders here so that we can um, compare some different scenarios in a second, uh, but for now let's just keep it here. Uh, let me go to another one so you can see this comparison. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna do that one again and then record. Yeah, so that's recorded. And then let's go to the east side, the south side, the west. Notice in the west, it's got this kind of variegated um, color. Uh, and that's because we're getting some inconsistent overshadowing from these buildings over here. Um, the flat surface of the roof and then the inclined surfaces or sawtooths on the roof. And notice also we're getting a little bit of overshadowing from the, um, from the surface in front of it. So if we go over here, we can then compare these. And I don't want you to get confused here because this bottom one put out two um, of the same. So we have to compare it from one to zero. So, so this number on the left is the total amount of energy that, that surface would produce and on the right is the energy density energy per square meter so on the north side we're generating 1911 and it's only 68 kilowatt hours per square meter compare that to the east where we're um, this is about two and a half times more uh, energy per square meter uh, but this is what only uh, 75 percent more or 125 percent of this uh, and that's because we just have less area so um, always when we're thinking about this we're, we're sort of trading off between the um, the area that we can gen use to generate um, electricity and the uh, the sort of greatest yield um, and I, I think it's worth underlying that the north for some of your buildings, the north might be a viable surface, even in the northern hemisphere. Um, uh, and then keep, as we keep going down here, the south side louvers 
I was particularly interested in, um, let me go and connect those so we can see them simulated. There, you can see that they're overshadowing each other. And, um, oh no. They are, north, east, south. So this one here. Um, so actually, these louvers have a lower um, uh, energy density than the east side because they're self-shading each other. Um, and so we could, let's try this, we can delete some and we should get Let's do this as a thought exercise. I'm going to delete one and then two and then three and see what happens here. So I'll rerun these. And notice that we've got a lot more energy generation on each of these surfaces. This back surface isn't great. This one's better and this one's really good. And um, Probably that's the last entry here. Yeah, if we go down here, we're now making um, 1,885 kilowatt hours per square meter, whereas before, or sorry, not per square meter, total, uh, we're making a whole lot less than we were before, almost half as much. But um, per square meter, we're actually making a lot more. So instead of 124, Kilowatt hours per square meter, we're now up at 218. So again, it's this trade-off between um, the size of your installation and how effective or efficient it is. We can look at that again. I'm going to just close these and, try and start again here with the roof. So there's the roof, uh, flat roof, as compared to a sawtooth roof, and if you compare these two with the flat roof, we've just got simply more area of coverage um, than with the sawtooth, even though the sawtooth has a slightly higher density. So there's trade-offs here. There's aesthetic trade-offs, there's cost trade-offs, there's uh, energy generation trade-offs. And this is exactly what I want you to experiment with as you uh, go through this. Now, the last thing I want to mention here is about the grid size, because the analysis grid is uh, that you assign here should really depend on the geometry that you use. So in this case, uh, we're picking up a little bit of overshadowing down at this lowest bit. If we um, increase that grid size to say one meter, then see that all goes away, and it doesn't see that because the, the analysis grid is bigger. And this, of course, will change the um, result instead of 17 or almost uh, 17,596, we're now at 18,435. Of course, this, the um, 17,596 is a little bit more accurate. Um, and um, just to show you, put this at 0.1 grid size just to see that any differences. And it takes a little bit longer to uh, to run. And now we're at 70,673. So kind of a negligible difference between this one and this one. Sure, there is a little bit of a difference, but it's not huge. So um, you might need to play around with this in order to see exactly uh, what the uh, sort of the right grid size is for your simulation. I guess I could also. Um, underline that on the south facade I had those louvers Is it that one yes this one and at this smaller grid size it's giving me much more refined um, uh, uh, information about how much each of these louvers could generate and at a less refined grid size a coarser grid size it will be a little bit less accurate so 
um, play around with that and see what works best for you. And I hope this was helpful. Good luck. Thank you.